as the days progress, it is difficult to examine this without highlighting the emotions that this has awakened, particularly at the railway quarters. Join us to assess development so far and possible pathways and possibilities for all parties involved is Barisat Chiagozi Wabuko, a chartered mediator and conciliator. Welcome to the program. Good morning to you. Welcome to the program. Thank, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you for coming. So My we've pleasure. seen a lot of sad stories. Mm. The retirees, among other residents at the railway quarters, are really complaining that they don't have enough time to relocate to any fresh accommodation. Mm. They've also said that no accommodation has been provided for them, and they have lived at that quarters for over 35 years. Okay. They have also said that some of their members, members of the community, have actually died as a result of this news. One of them actually fell from a building trying to remove his zinc because he thought that the house was going to be demolished. Okay. And they have continued to emphasize that they know it was a temporary permit they were issued, but that the case is still in court, and that it's not okay for the case to be in court, and they are being asked by the third party to leave in mm. two weeks' time. Mm. What is your assessment of these developments? Well, it's, it's a very unfortunate situation on two grounds. One, on economic and humanitarian grounds. Basically, we know how things are in the country right now. So it's unconscionable for any third party to try to push out, push out these retirees. These are people who served the nation and then served the Nigerian Railway Corporation. So I think it's unconscionable at this point in time in the country to push out these statesmen and statewomen who served us and then to throw them out in the streets without any form of compensation whatsoever. And then the, the, the most harrowing aspect of it is when there's a pending matter in court and then the third party rights ruptured over the court procedures and proceedings and tries to evict this. In fact, the, the mere fact that notice was issued to them to leave while a court order or court matter is still pending is an affront to justice and is actionable actually. It's a contempt in the face of the court. So, because the, the parties have uh, issues to ventilate. In fact, the owners of the land, which is the NROC, they are in court with the retirees, so they already joined issues on the matter. So there is no justifiable grounds to throw them out in this matter. So I, I think that it is actionable, it is a contempt in the face of the court, as long as the matter is still on. In fact, prior to the ongoing matter, you know, there, there was a matter that was decided by a National Industrial Court in 2016, where the court held and gave a decision that they are entitled to the right of first refusal before they can sell to another person. So these retirees have the right of first refusal. So even before you evict them, you ask them whether they have interest in purchasing the place. They have a temporary resident permit, but then they have the right of first refusal. So they must exercise that right first before they can be evicted. And I don't think they have done that. That is why they have gone back to court to stop the eviction. So I think it's actionable in law for them to be thrown out when there's a pending court matter. It's very actionable. Right, okay, so the, we've of course been made to understand that the Lizzi disbursed the sum of 5,000, 10,000 10, naira to the retirees and the occupants of that particular area. Now, I would like to know to what motive, what motive do you think that yeah, that that money being given to them is meant to achieve? What's the motive, what possible motive could there be behind it? I, I, I think it's a slap on the faces of our retirees. These are men and women who served the country in NRC. I don't know why that was given to them. I don't know the purpose. Was it given to them to buy lollipop or to just buy a bottle of um, soft drink? For me, I, I think that they're trying to create the impression that they sort of have a sort of compensation. But then that is grossly below, below what you call a compensation. It's not a compensation or anything. Remember, I said that there's a court order on them. So if, if you want them to leave, you have to give them one adequate time within which to leave the premises. That's adequate about six months or just about for them to leave. Secondly, you know, there's already a breach because they have the right of face refusal. Secondly, have they refused to purchase the, those premises? If they have, then give them adequate compensation to encourage them. So you don't just fling um, 5,000 to them and tell them to leave within two weeks. Uh, it, it's not proper. No, no court will even accede to that. So I think it's a slap on the faces of these Nigerians that served their country. They, they, they're trying to give the impression that there is a sort of compensation. For me, that is grossly inadequate. It's no compensation. How would you expect a Nigerian to secure a risk? In fact, it's not even enough to hire a vehicle to pack their belongings. So I think it's not proper. They are trying to give a semblance that they compensated them, the retirees, but that is, that is no compensation. Definitely, because when it has to be compensation, there's supposed to be a proper audit of the property, evaluation of the property. Exactly. To ensure that 
the compensation is reflective yes. of what is owned by those people. Now, we're unable to receive a copy of the temporary permit. That established the permit was temporary because the retirees said that they were advised against this by their lawyer because the case is still in court. Mm. But one of the retirees informed Afia TV that the temporary permit did not contain any duration. While we can't verify this because we do not have a copy, perhaps in the course of this development we'll have one, we understand that there is something such as squatters' rights. Mm. And in some states, when squatters stay for seven to six years, you have to give them a certain amount of respect when it comes to trying to evict them, whether they are unwanted or wanted guests. How do these squatters' rights apply in Nigeria? You know, in, in, in Nigeria, especially in Enugu, we, we have um, landlord and tenants laws of Enugu State that regulates how you can evict. In fact, you cannot e e evict a person by just giving him a notice. There are procedures, even if the person is a, is a squatter, you give the person adequate notice, not, notices. You give the first notice, the notice to quit, then on the expiration of the notice to quit, you give the person what we call a seven days notice of owner's intention to recover possession. When that one has exhausted and then the person is still holding onto the same premises, you now go to court to bring a summons. It's going to be a full court process or procedure. So you sue the person to court, bring witnesses, send that document. So it's, it's actually an elaborate thing. So you don't just give them two weeks after which, if they fail to uh, leave the premises, you bring in your bulldozers and demolish the structures. You don't do that. So it's actually a full procedure of law. If you give them the first notice, second notice, and then the next thing is that you take them to court and then bring witnesses and prove that they ought not to be on the premises. They also have the right to defend themselves. They can ventilate their, their, their rights in the court. So if at the end of the day, the court is of the opinion that they ought not to be on the premises, the court will not give an order for them to be evicted by the processes of court not by hiring Abu or talks to bring um, bulldozers to come and bulldoze them out of the way. So they have rights of procedures and processes of court that will be served on them. The matter will go to court. That is, if after giving notices on them, they have not evacuated, they give the first notice, second notice, then you bring a summons against them, and they come to court to defend themselves. So if that is not followed, then it is illegal. What responsibility does NRC have towards those people occupying that property currently? First of all, we must get to understand that these people are not mere stragglers. They were staff of the NRC. Mm -hmm. They labeled for them for a couple of years, 35 years as it were, and then they, they, they retired. And then they, they, they are giving, being given this shoddy treatment. I think that's where ADR comes in. So if they want to obviate the need to go to, through the long haul of the law, they can bring them around to, at, at a round table. ADR is also a, a, a means of... Um, solving this, resolving disputes. So if they don't want to go through the whole hub of the legal bureaucracy, which may take all the time, so they may go through ADR, like they're asking for more time. It's a very simple thing. Sit down with them and their lawyers and discuss. So at the end of the day, you can give them six months or eight months, be a little patient, and they will, they will, they, they, they will leave. So I, I think that, that that's where they are lacking. They have to engage negotiators or mediators who bring them to the round table and then discuss on how to easily and, and seamlessly see them out of the premises instead of this um, brutish means that they're they 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 trying to implement. Secondly, again, very important, once the matter is in court, every party should maintain status quo. I believe that the lawyer handling the, the case knows what to do. He knows what to do. He can bring out an, an action for content of court. There's a content in the face of the court. Okay. The matter is still before the court and then in fact, the, the, the notice issued is an affront to the majesty of the court. So, so I, the lawyer, I believe the lawyer knows what to do. I believe he will do the proper thing. But the proper thing for, for, to do is for him to bring an action, bring a contempt proceeding against NRC, against the um, NRC property management company for an affront and assault to the majesty of the court. They ought not to do that. Once the matter is in court, every party should maintain status quo. Because at the end of the day, you might even unearth some things that there may be a contract which NRC has not kept to their own side of the bargain. In fact, they might end up having damages against NRC, as it were. All right. Now, we understand that the railway quarters is not a retirement home. It's not a retirement home for people to stay forever, and they have established that this is a temporary permit. Yes. But when we spoke to the district spokesperson of NRC, he said that some of them are even illegal occupants. Now, the matter is, if there are illegal occupants among them, Will the courts actually give them as much attention, so much attention as to even uh, respond to the court injunction or give them a court order if they truly are illegal occupants? Can they be regarded as illegal occupants if they've overstayed their welcome? 
how can we determine who is an illegal occupant unless the matter goes to court? You know, you know, it, it, when, it, in court, both parties are heard. It is their words against the settlers. So yeah, they're saying that, in fact, the issue of the, 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 the permit, it's not a contract, it's a, it's, a, it's a mono document being issued by NRC. So it's not a contract that, that they agree that they will live at a particular period of time. So if I give you a permit, it's not a contract, it's, it's a document being issued for me to you that you should leave our premises as it were. So whether somebody is an um, illegal occupant or illegal occupant or a statutory occupant must be determined by the court. So how do you determine who is an illegal occupant? That means that you can get up one day and throw someone out of your property because you perceive he's an illegal occupant. So it is the court that determines who is an illegal occupant because at the end of the day, you don't know the document that the occupants have. At the end of the day, they will bring in their document to counter what NRC has. So that's why you, you use the court to try to juxtapose what the NRC has and what the occupants have. So at the end of the day, you might even discover that they have a better access or better possession, possessory rights than NRC. All right. But if, for instance, they are actually confirmed illegal occupants, do they still have a case? If they are confirmed to be illegal occupants, the court will make an order that they leave. It becomes an order of court. Okay. And they have no option than to leave. Okay. But then the court will have a human face to bend over backwards to give them time. Actually, what they're asking is time. So, like I said, to obviate the need for all this um, the bureaucracy and the bottlenecks of the, of the law courts, what ADR will sit down around the table and tell them how much time do you need. But have your banter, discuss over it, and then at the end of the day, try to get a time that works for both parties so that they will leave seamlessly. So the community chairman, during the interview we had with him, said that his life is being threatened currently and people are after his life. What would you make of that? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's an allegation. So if people are after his life, he knows what to do. He should incident a report. Uh, the people are after his life, they, they called him on the phone or they wrote a, wrote a letter to him. He should incident a report. So the police will handle that and then get the culprits um, arrested and prosecuted for threat to life. It's actionable, so they can do that. All right, on a final note, how much time is enough time? Well, um, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't hazard a guess here, but then, um, if you ask me, I'm not in their shoes, but I think reasonableness, a reasonable man's view, at least I think six months, eight months should be enough for somebody to you know, put his or her house in order before the person leaves, but then two weeks, I don't think it's, it's, it's workable. So uh, what's the rush? That's why I, I am advocating for it. I'm, I'm a mediator, I'm a conciliator. So, so ADR, ADR is, is a system that works for both parties. It's a win-win situation. So if they have this round table and then discuss, and then let them have time, just time. You'll be, you'll be surprised. I'm asking for six months on their behalf. You may be surprised. They, they may even opt for three months. So if they have a round table and then they discuss as, uh, as, as, as brothers and sisters and then say, okay, we're giving you this, this, this. Let's have... Um, views from both sides of the, of, of the parties. At the end of the day, you have a workable situation and then it will not escalate to something else. Somebody has already died. It should not reoccur. Yes. Now, looking at the sides, hearing from all sides, we've not heard from the Lizzie. We don't even know who the Lizzie is. And I don't think it's something we should focus on too much because until we know his identity, we can't really speak on his behalf. Mm. But speaking about going to pursue alternative dispute resolution methods and the ongoing case in court, we did hear that the Lizzie has gone ahead to give them a two-week eviction notice. Do these parties, uh, the other parties, strike you as those that are ready to listen to what the court has to say, let alone alternative dispute resolution court? They don't need to listen to the court. If they don't listen to the court, they're going for it. In fact, whoever is the lazy can go to prison. That is the, 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 out, the outcome of a uh, committal proceedings. If they are found to have breached, breached an order of court, a person who is behind, if it's a company, the veil of incorporation will be lifted and then the directors will be jailed it's as serious as that. So I don't think the LSE knows, I don't think the, the third party knows, no has any information about how the court works. Because if it's an affront to the judgment or order of court, whoever is the director or whoever is the person who is who is the third party, the person can go to jail for this. So it, it's better for them to to be to be to hold back a little bit and then know what this court is on. In fact, as the matter is on, no action should be taken there. Any action taken there, whoever is taking that action can go. To jail. It's as simple as that. All right. Thank you so much, Barista Chiragozi, for being here. It's a pleasure having you. And perhaps we'll hear from other sides to this story and follow it up as it develops. Thank you once again. My pleasure. Always my pleasure.